The year is 1992, and Microsoft Windows 96 is in the dawn of its development. But suddenly, you are approached by Gil Bates, the chairman of Microsoft at the time, and he requests that you recreate the ever popular Microsoft Paint brand new from scratch, the brand new operating system. And so Gil Bates wishes, and begin creating this program which will allow users to paint little pictures for Microsoft Windows. And so far, it's going pretty great. You open a window and make it so you can left click to paint pictures and right click to erase. But suddenly Gil Bates comes sliding back and he says to you, don't forget that paint should also have the pencil tool, the eraser tool, the spray tool, the text tool, and the one that lets you draw many different shapes in that. So that's quite a lot of stuff. So you create a bunch of buttons to these tools and immediately think about how you can actually implement them all, given that right now only the paint tool is supported. <laughs> Looking at what you've already done, which was create a function for the paintbrush tool, you realise that you could just create a function for the other tools as well. But first of all, you create an enum for the tool types, containing a constant for each one that you wish to implement. And then using the buttons from the toolbar from earlier, you make it so that when you click one of the buttons, it switches to a tool type, depending on which button you clicked. And then inside of the if statement, which checks if the left mouse button is being pressed, we can have a switch statement for the different tool types. And it's from here where the different tool type functions will be called from. Now all that was left to do was implement the rest of the tool types, such as the paintbrush, which was already made, the pencil tool, the spray tool, and the fill tool, all of which are getting called from the same giant switch statement, which is starting to look a little bit messy by this point, and maybe even a little bit unmaintainable. But despite all this, you go to the test it, you run the program, and you see it's all working perfectly fine, so you know, the bad code's not so much of a big deal, right? Uh, yeah, no, this is pretty bad actually. Let's take a close look at the code so we can really understand why this is, and then why the strategy design pattern can save the code. So first of all, this is the code that checks if a button is clicked, and then changes the tool that the user is using. While this code isn't that bad, it is quite repeated, and so there's probably a better way to do this. The switch statement here calls the different functions for the different tool types depending on which one the user is currently using. For now there's only 5 cases, but what if we add a lot more tools, then this would just become ridiculously long and unmaintainable. We then have the square tool and the line tool, and these require knowing where the left mouse button was first clipped to the canvas, and then where the left mouse button was then released in the canvas. Furthermore, they both require you to sort of draw a preview of the line or square before they're actually drawn onto the canvas. And of this, the implementation of these tools is sort of split between two places. The first place being where the functions for these different tool types is actually called from, and the second place being where the preview of the line and the square is actually drawn. And this is bad because it means if you want to find the implementation of these tool types, then it means you have to go to two completely different locations in the code. The final main reason why this code is not so good is because it's basically just one giant multi-level nested switch statement, which eventually will just become to be very unreadable. But now question, what exactly is the strategy design pattern and how can it improve this code? The basic idea is it just allows you to select an algorithm during the runtime of a program to fit the needs of whatever's going on at the current time. How this works is you have some base class or interface known as a strategy, which is then used by some other part of the program. And then classes will implement the strategy interface, of which is able to be used by the main program, as well as switch between during runtime. For example, at the start of the program they might be using strategy 1, and then they might use strategy 2, strategy 3, and then they might go back to strategy 1 a bit later. So. In terms of the paint program, the strategy would be any tool type, and this would be used by the main program like in the previous example. And then the different implementations of the strategy would be the different tool types like the paint tool, the fill tool, or the spray tool. These different strategies would be switched between as the user clicks on the different tool buttons on the toolbar. For instance, clicking on the paintbrush button would switch the program to begin using the paintbrush strategy, or clicking on the spray can button would switch the program to begin using the spray can. So now that the strategy pattern is hopefully understood, let's actually begin implementing it in the code. To begin with the implementation, I created the tool type strategy base class, which will act as an interface for the different tool types. This will have pure virtual functions for handling the different mouse events, such as clicking or moving, as well as a function for rendering a preview as needed, for example the line and square tools. To follow up, I created a bunch of classes for the different tool types, where each one will implement the functions of the interface. 
I then post the file for each tool type and then move the implementation of each one from the main file into their respective strategy class implementation. And each tool type was neatly organised into their own file, it meant I could begin cleaning up the main file, starting by getting rid of the tool type functions as these had now been moved. However, in order to actually use the new tool type implementations, I first have to create object of type tool type strategy, which is the interface that they all implement. And it's from this object that I will be able to call the different functions from, such as handling the mouse being moved or the mouse being clicked. And by default, it's just going to be using the paintbrush strategy. And then to change the strategy, clicking on the buttons in the toolbar no longer changes an enum, but rather changes the strategy class the current tool object currently is. So now that I have this strategy class object, it means that code that previously looked like this can now be shortened to code that looks like this, where the function called to handle mouse move would use whatever strategy the object it currently is using, thanks to polymorphism. And the code that was previously for rendering the preview of the line and the square tool that used to look like this, now looks like this instead, which is a lot shorter and a lot more readable. And when you go to actually run the program, test it out, you'll notice that it's just exactly the same as it was before. And that's because the logic of the code hasn't really changed, it's just been better organised. So anyways, that is the strategy design pattern, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Quick shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you Kilo Crazy Man, Hayden, Timothy Gibbons, Timo Schrader, Alan Fernandez, Michael Kirsch, Lucas Starenberger, Neil Blakely Milner, and Nate Brown. Thank you all very much for the support. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. Link to the source code and other links are in the description below. And goodbye. Bye.